Uh, good morning to our prospective parents that have started to join. Um, just before us, we start, I'm your host, Anne Louise, and we welcome you on this. Uh, well, in Johannesburg, it's quite a cold morning and wet. Um, we welcome you here, and we would just like to um, just put down a few house rules. Uh, at the bottom of your screen, you've got a Q&A box as well as a chat box. Uh, we would like to hear your questions as we go through our program um, so please do post them up there if you've got any questions during the event. Uh, we will be having quite a number of our students and our staff as panelists. So I really do hope that you enjoy them. First up, we've got James that will give us an overview. And then after the James Moyer, after that, a welcome from our principal, Amanda Newman. Thank you. Good morning, ladies, gents, um, colleagues, and students. Um, I'm going to be very short. I have um, an announcement to make, which I'm very proud of. Um, when we launched Praxis, we have promised access points, um, venues that our learners can go, where they will be supervised, um, and that they also will be um, provided internet with um, at no extra fee. So um, our partner in that is CTU. If you don't know CTU, CTU is a private university in South Africa. And they have 12 campuses that will be made available to our learners. And um, the wonderful thing is that obviously it is not compulsory, um, but we don't want our Praxis students sitting at home in their bedrooms Mondays to Fridays by themselves. We want to give them the opportunity to go out to meet other students. Obviously, it is not um, compulsory um, and um, internet will be provided. Um, as well as supervision. So from my side, that is um, something that we've worked hard on behind the, the screens. Very excited about that. Um, maybe a date to earmark is the 16th of October that CTU will be launching this. In the meantime, if you've got any queries regarding that, um, please contact Rio or Mari or even Amanda, and we will be able to tell you more. Um, especially um, which campus um, is in your area. In addition to that, we have also have small schools that are busy adopting the practice platform um, that will also be made available later on this year regarding um, locations and where they are. And that's it from my side. That's a very exciting announcement. I believe in online education that um, there's a need for this. Um, and that's it. Thank you very much, Anne-Louise. Thank you so much, uh, James, for that. And next up, we've got Amanda just to give an introduction to this morning. Good morning, everyone. In my position, interacting with the teachers and students has been a privilege. Without the magnificent complement of staff, we would not be able to achieve what we have with the students in a virtual space. I'd like to thank the staff and students for their time today as well as our audience. With the rapid advancement of technology, online learning has become a part of the educational space worldwide for primary school as well as tertiary right through. Students are increasingly turning to online learning as a viable alternative to a physical classroom, as this has drastically changed due to the increased infrastructures and technology. We encourage student socialization with peers by participating in subject-specific discussions. We have a structured timetable, just like the physical school, so that students have regulated times for lessons, as well as an assembly and break. Online learning has proven to be the positive alternative to students in this modern era. It is hard to understand the notion of leaving behind the conventional classroom, which I'm sure we can all understand especially if it is faced to, with a vast space called the internet. However, that is not reason enough to shy away from this alternative, which has proven to be valid and useful for many students. And we found that now with our online learning. The teachers have included some of the students to demonstrate their online learning experience. I hope that you enjoy the interaction. I'd like, you, like to introduce you to Mark, who is our academic specialist. Thanks, Mark. 
Uh, good morning, parents, learners, and panelists, and thank you, Amanda. Uh, thank you for your time this morning. Uh, please remember this is your morning. Feel free to post questions throughout the webinar or any comments. And I hope at the end of the session, all your questions will be answered. So I'm Mark Rosa. I'm the principal of Eagle House School, which is the twin uh, to Praxis Online. And I assist Amanda at Praxis Online. At Praxis Online, we strive to bring the virtual but real classroom uh, to your children in the comfort of their homes. At the moment, you're looking for a school for your child. And we know that choosing a school is never an easy task, and it shouldn't be. You know, choosing an online school is an even bigger challenge, especially after two years uh, within the COVID pandemic. But we've learned quite a bit from it, and hopefully we will be able to deliver uh, an almost near perfect school. I know James always says there's no perfect school, but we can only try. Our classes have 15 children or less, uh, which allows us to interact with your child on an individual basis more often. Um, our school is grounded on a bricks and mortar school, like I said, the Twin to Eagle House. Uh, to echo what Amanda said, we follow a structured timetable, but within a virtual classroom. The teachers use high tech strategies in all their classes, and we focus mainly on high impact teaching strategies, which we hope will help us reach all the children. And just to mention a few of these key strategies, it's goal setting, work examples, collaborative learning, structured lessons, explicit teaching, questioning, and metacognitive feedback. In goal setting, we set clear goals for each lesson. Uh, lessons are structured and the learners know exactly what to expect. Within explicit teaching, we go back to the basics where teachers demonstrate what is expected of the learners. Uh, and we cannot stress the importance of differentiated teaching, especially in this day and age. And we use various software applications, <coughs> excuse me, and we try to meet the learners in, in a comfort zone, but on a differentiated manner. Collaborative teaching is high up, especially within uh, the online environment. We use breakout rooms, and we get learners to collaborate throughout. For me, the most important one, I think, is the cognitive feedback, where children have to think about their own learning and understand the learning process. We do follow the national curriculum uh, in order to prepare them for the real exams in 2023. Uh, but for more information on all of these, please feel free to visit our, our website and you should be able to get more information on, on kids. We do follow the IAB curriculum, which is largely, largely based on the critical thinking aspect. And that's one of the, what we call HIT strategies. So critical thinking is one of the four skills needed within the 21st century skills. Uh, we fully accredit, accredited to offer the IAB exam and parents don't have to worry about or run around uh, to find a school that offers accredited exams, especially when children get to matric. As James has mentioned, that exciting news. We have many centers countrywide uh, that can be used, and these will then double up as exam centers as well. So Praxis offers subjects that are accepted at all universities. We issue reports at the end of each term, and if you need a progress report, we issue progress reports as well. We monitor the students' attendance and we offer timetable support wherever we can. So we do cater for all the streams. You know, learners can then go into the sciences, humanities, the business field, and even a general field. Um, you know, that's just some of the things that we do have to offer, but I'm sure the teachers will be able to offer you more information. And like I said, please feel free to visit our website or call any of us. Please post your questions at the end. Thank you so much, Anne Louise. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mark, for that. Uh, next up, we have got our languages. Uh, Mrs. Bronwyn and Marika, 
that are having a, a little bit of a panelist with some students. We're quite excited to see that. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome back to the Praxis Weekly Talk Show. I'm your host, Mattel Peggy. Hello and welcome. Eka Jade and Yegan Island. Joining us today via Teams, we welcome two new teachers to our Praxis family. This is Rach Jaden. This is the PFL Tanis is Darmia as Pinnach, Yar, Saya Provia. That's impressive. Welcome to the show, ladies. Welcome here by us. Boy, boy, thank you. It is heerlijk om hier te wees. Ons is so opgewonde om deel te wees van die span en nieuwe leerders in ons klasse te verwelkom. Mrs. Rousseau and Mrs. Green, it is a pleasure to have you with us. How do you feel on being on the weekly talk show? It is absolutely fabulous. We have been waiting for an opportunity an invitation and finally we received one. It's an absolute honor to be here with you guys today. Vertel ons meer oor wat ons van verwag van Vital Tanisa. So in die Afrikaanse klas, praat, skryf en dink ons in Afrikaans. Leerders kry die kans met tol prakties toe te pas, as ook om nieuwe kennis vir die tol en die kultuur op te doen. Dis daarom lekker om ook in Afrikaans te kan skinner. And in English? English is um, inclusive of literature, which is uh, going to be your drama, not just Shakespeare. And we will have our own drama, but it is the drama, the novel. We have um, film study as well, and my personal favorite, which is poetry. Then we add a dash of language, for example, text comprehension, and every now and again, we attend to some creative writing. My Afrikaans is not perfect, nie. but I know one thing. Dames, say me, what your name is. My name is Adrianus. Ladies, what do you Well, I don't know if you can sing, Yes, well, Mr. Rasal, what makes Praxis unique? Mr. Rasal, what makes Praxis unique? From an educator's point of view, I think what is very important and um, what happens actually quite quickly is that we learn to step out of our comfort zone where we would have a learner seated in front of us. We now need to learn how to make use of a variety of other platforms as well as resources when we are educating. Um, we incorporate a lot of visual aids and I have seen repeatedly that this is something that increases the quality of learning for the students, um, as you are all visually inclined. And we don't stick to the, the old fashioned way of reading from a textbook. <laughs> Well, definitely not with you. Learners are active in the class, betrokken, are interactive activities to voltooi and in rechte tijd aan the onderwijzer terug te, terugvoering te, te kry en te gee. Um, door is min tyd vir speelities, maar as ons speel, speel ons daarom lekker. Teaching has moved into a virtual environment. What advantages have you experienced while teaching online? I must admit, initially, I thought that it would be quite a disaster because I was under the assumption that the learners would not actively participate. But I was very much surprised to see that, especially because you are within your own comfort zone, you do participate more than we would normally actually see in a classroom. The benefits of Praxis is very similar to that of a private school. The small school environment, um, increased individual attention, but now 
a learner can access that from their comfort zone where they are exposed to the absolute minimum of distractions. And it is done in such a way that we are able to, within our learning and teaching experience, incorporate several other methods of teaching and learning. And any further hints and tips for our viewers? Hmm. Well, definitely, I'd say, you know, um, read, read, read. So read as often as you can, read as much as you can. Um, you know, a book a week keeps your brain working and neat. Is there a pie ice pack in Yellow Parker? Um, yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, unfortunately, I cannot lie. Um, there is quite a bit of homework. Um, any language is a subject that requires that you remain constantly involved with it. Um, even for a subject such as English, if it is your home language, I promise you that that which you use on social media and that which you are exposed to on TV shows and in the movies, that is not the academic version of the language that we are looking at. So, yes, there will be homework. It is definitely something that will differ, um, increase and decrease, depending on which area of the language we are focusing on. Well, thank you so much for joining us here today. Dit was interessant om jylle te leer ken. Ons team uit om sommer by jylle oor tel het by jylle te leer. Tot ziens, tot volgende keer! Join us again soon for more practice news. Thank you so much. Goodbye, thank guys. you, guys. Well, I'm, I'm not sure about uh, the attendees, but I really enjoyed it. I really hope that you see a little bit more of those weekly um, interviewing going on. <laughs> Next up, uh, we've got mathematics. Uh, we're going to play a pre-recording, and then if there's any questions, you are welcome to ask. Okay. I am Hayley Delianis. I'm a maths teacher at Praxis Online School. As maths teachers, we are passionate about our subjects, but more important than the actual subject is developing a love for learning how maths relates to everyday life and being able to apply the skills that we have learned in class. Maths is critical for understanding everyday life as well as for future studies. So at Praxis, each subject is not just an academic subject. It provides an opportunity to build relationships with students, relationships between the students, as well as relationships between students and teachers. We are mindful of the differences between traditional schooling and online school schooling, and we do try to create interactive opportunities for the students. We recently, as part of the maths class, did a Padlet board showcasing pictures of students' pets. This board, which I'll show you, it shows pictures which students from across our school, grade seven through to grade 10, as well as teachers and, ac and administrative staff have added to the board. And this then is an excellent example of how across the school we can collaborate with each other. And it's an opportunity for our learners to build these personal relationships. We are, of course, in a virtual world. So taking these opportunities to build personal relationships and stimulate conversation about a simple thing like Who's, who has what kind of pets has certainly proven to be 
great fun for the for the students being able to interact with each other on a different level other than purely academics. So this board will be used as part of teaching data handling and probability, but it has provided the opportunity for the learners to chat about who has what pets and who has a donkey as a pet and a pig as a pet and a hedgehog as a pet. So that really has been a fun um, experience for all of our students. And so while we do know that learning can happen purely from books, we also know that growing that love of learning happens through personal, personal relationships. It happens through live interaction. It happens through a sense of being valued and adding value. And this then is the aim of each of our lessons, both academic as well as an interaction with learners to build those relationships, encourage each other and bring out the best that each day we can do our best and build on that. Okay. I am happy to be on this. I'm a maths teacher. Thank you. Um, if there's any questions, uh, please post it up in the Q&A or the chat box. Um, up, so we've got, up next, we've got Shana, um, teacher Shana, and some of our students that are going to talk about creative arts and social sciences. Thank you. Shana. Thank you, Eloise. Good morning. My name is Shana Momberg, and I teach creative arts and social science. Creative art is beneficial to every learner as it not only helps the learners think in a creative way, but it also improves mood, boosts the learner's self-esteem, improves their cognitive function, improves their social life and social connections, as well as assists with alleviating stress and anxiety. Creative art is divided into two components, namely visual art and drama. Visual art is important to promote critical thinking, positive learner impact, creative creativity, and overall academic performance. Our curriculum includes painting of portraits, using clay to make pinch pots, as well as using recyclable material to create fashion and functional containers. Drama enhances verbal and nonverbal expression of ideas. It improves voice projection, articulation of words, fluency with language, and persuasive speech. Listening and observation skills develop by playing drama games, being an audience, rehearsing and performing. Learners are able to write their own scripts as well as have the opportunity to perform them in front of the class, make and present their own puppet shows, learn about South African poetry, praise poetry, as well as have the opportunity to write their own poems. Now in social science, the aim of social science is to help learners acquire the knowledge of their environment, create an understanding of human relationships, attitudes, and values by providing relevant information, knowledge, and skills. The study of social science prepares students to grow up as active, responsible, and reflective members of society. Social science consists of two components, namely geography and history. In geography, learners acquire the ability to interpret the distribution and processes of physical and human phenomena and understand the dynamic interrelationship between the physical and human world. Our curriculum includes map work, settlements, development, climate regions, as well as resource use and sustainability, just to name a few. Teaching history to learners gives a broad perspective, generalized understanding about how the present comes about and, and the understanding of the process of historical change. We teach learners about World War I and World War II, turning points in South African history 1948 to 1994, the mineral revolution in South Africa and the industrial revolution in South Africa and Britain. As we prepare our learners for critical thinking, together with our high impact teaching strategy approach, we strive for great success. This year, Social Science and Creative Arts collaborated in a cross-curricular activity. 
Learners had to research deep level gold mining and turn it into a performance by creating a dialogue using puppets that they had to make. The puppets contributed to their visual arts assessment, the dialogue and their performance contributed towards their drama assessment, and the research done on deep level gold mining contributed towards the social science practical assessment. Here is a base performance. Can I can I stand up? And yes. It just looks like the puppets are talking. Then absolutely, yeah. please do. Okay. Hey, dude, I need um your help. Please tell me about deep level gold mining and why it started. All right, sit down and let me explain to you. Okay, thanks. I was really confused. Deep level gold mining started in the Witwatersrand in 1886 and onwards. The reason this happened was because of gold not being found on the surface. So miners started to dig much deeper just for the gold ores. Oh, now I get it. So deep level gold mining started because gold was no longer found on the surface. Yes, exactly. I have a couple more questions to ask. Okay, no problem. Go ahead and ask me. Aside from gold being rare to find, what were other reasons that made it so valuable? Well, gold is very easy to transport. You can melt it and make beautiful products once and once polished, it becomes much more beautiful. And finally, gold cannot rust. Okay, cool. How was gold mined? All right, let me explain. Miners travel down shafts in lifts. Once the miners have reached certain tunnels, skilled miners into the seam. After drilling, they blast the seam with dynamite or falls into the trucks that are in the bottom tunnel. Then trucks take ore to the skips. Skips take ore to the top of the surface. From here, gold ore is taken by a conveyor belt to the process plant where it will be processed. Oh damn, that must be a long process. Yes, it is a long and hard process. Any more questions? Yes, I have a few more. Were there risks underground and how were conditions? Well, conditions underground were bad, like very bad and dangerous. Due to small spaces, very little oxygen caused workers to suffocate and die. Dynamite explosions caused rocks to fall and kill workers. And small pieces of stones used to fly hundreds of kilometers when dynamite explosions happened. If one of these stones had to hit a worker, it caused instant death. God damn, no, wow. No. Yo, I don't know what to say. I have one more question to ask. How were workers treated? Workers were cruelly treated for mistakes, for not doing their job nicely and for working slowly. They were paid little and worked long hours daily. God damn, those must have been extremely bad times. Yes, it wasn't a very good time. Well, thanks for telling me, really appreciate it. No, no problem, anytime, bud. I'm done, ma'am. Well done, Obey. Well done, Thank That you. information was incredible. Oh my goodness. That is incredible. Do me a favor, just hold your puppets up like here next to your head. I just want to take a photo for Mama Amanda. Do you mind? Do you mind if I send it to Mam Amanda so she can see what we're doing? That's awesome. Well done, my boy. Well done. Your puppet making is incredible. I am so happy. The performance was amazing and your research. Wow. That was so, so good, Abe. I'm so proud of you, my boy. Well done. Absolutely incredible. Thank okay, you. I've got your marks. Well done uh, thank you Shana I'm not sure if you want to add anything to that and then um, after you I'll hand over to Scott for geography and Isizulu Okay, so then next up we've got geography and Isizulu with Scott and Aneli our student. Thank you, Scott. All right. Uh, <clears throat> hello, 
a warm welcome to all our audience, our colleagues, our support staff, the beautiful learners that we have in this platform. Mem Amanda, Anna Louise, Mr. James Moore, and the ones that I didn't mention, actually my silence means a lot and the decibels cannot speak more than I've already said. Okay, I'm Mr. Scott and I'm currently teaching geography and this is Zulu. I'm gonna start by talking about geography before I could switch to this Zulu. One thing I love about geography is the aspect that it brings our environment close to us. The fact that I am aware of my environment and the places that surround me and what is happening around me makes me aware of my situation. I remember I had a friend that I used to talk to and he's like, how come you always know what's going to happen tomorrow? I'm like, I'm a geographer. I'm aware of my situation. I'm aware of the weather. I'm aware of everything that is going to happen before it happens concerning the environment. So basically with geography, it's split into two papers. There's the theory part, which is the paper one, that teaches learners to be critical thinkers, think beyond the scope of reasoning, and it allows them to express themselves as they have to think beyond the boundaries of the classroom situation, whereby they relate to things that they see outside and bring them into the classroom situation in their own ways. Then the second paper, which is paper two, it's a bit of a mathematical paper, where there's mathematical principles that are being applied uh, and there's a lot of calculations that go on. And the good part now that we're a virtual school, it's never easy to be in a virtual school and be in a virtual classroom. There's a part in geography that has been introduced and it's called GIS, it's Geographical Information Systems. So the good part about geographical information systems, it's just the computer-based technology, whereby it collects data, you have to analyze the data, you manipulate data, then after data manipulation, you have to get the answers after manipulating that data. Like you're looking at a situation by, you ask yourself, why do they get all these statistics about Corona, which area, why this area is a hot spot and why that area is a hot spot. It's because of geography. They use GIS. What, how do they use GIS to get to that? Which means they do data collection. Then they bring that data into a classroom situation. They analyze that data. Then after analyzing that data, they start manipulating it, trying to figure out how this Corona is moving around. Then they get all these relevant answers up to finding out which area is a hotspot. Then having said that, now that we're in virtual school, it's easier for learners to understand the concept of GIS because they work with computers. Now every technology is in front of them. And by teaching them such aspects in a classroom situation, we are already equipping them to be modern citizens because our modern world is moving into a technological aspect. We are doing away with the white paper that I have in front of me here, and we're moving away to fingerprints and all that. So we are moving away into a modern computerized technological advanced world, which we call the quaternary sector in geography. The quaternary sector will be the last sector of the economy. So we are moving to that world already. So with the learning of geography and praxis, we have introduced all these components to try and mold our learners, to create them to be challenging individuals in the citizens and become citizens and uh, create uh, change in the whole world around them. Okay, thank you. That's basically that's much that I can say about geography. Should you wish to know more about it, there's the website. Uh, you can get hold of us in the website and the numbers that you find there. Then strictly to code switch um, to Isi Zulu. Uh, Isi Zulu, I'm teaching Isi Zulu as well. So Isi Zulu, it's a language. Jenga my language is wrong. It's a stand of Kuluma, Stokes, Funding Kondo, Spale, Sense in this meaning. So, is all about having genuity, Ms. Okuluma, Ms. Zulu, Namshanj. My Taba and Wood, he names Oyenza, my essential is a pants and Funduan, and Fundisai, or Anel or Kune, and my Shara Pans Nine, Mat Anel, Nine to Sis Pagina Nine, and the Sense, Kulum Sevens, or Melissa Wins. Melin with the presentation of Melissa year to the Pamu class. This is what he now Kuma Nile, then was a city say, Cooking Dwayne Zanganayada, 
abantu basweleka abantu bashona kulezinsuku why not send in konjo then school me mabof i don't know it's fine let's asibhale sibona ukuthi ine singayenza then say bhala le inkonjo yena uzo present i'll give me platform to i present so basically what i'm trying to say to you is i was given a platform to talk about this is then i engaged a learner that i'm teaching uh his name is her name is amelem then we wrote a beautiful poem about death because death is something that is inevitable accidents in my body are into and all i want to so this card we cannot run away from it so we wrote a poem about death and i would love to give you the platform to express and present that poem to good to you guys ane um in tandu bini labazali makaya uti shagali namba fungi mina eka malami ane les mungwa mine um nienza u grade eight like pictures so in gondro esi bali wina mungla ikuluma ngubufu so in gondro lena indi nzu kusi si bali esi buni ilu uti enkla bengi kune si fawas bizan covid-19 esi kwa daban daban yu so in gondro nitu nse mungu tizu enjo baapi okoko nungkuru betu baapi abazali betu baapi abafo wetu notati wetu zipi izi ngani ezi zali izumu kufa umudu ngoba au keti ukuthi umunani noma umdala au keti ukuthi unicala noma au nani kufa ngiya kuzonda kufa ngiya kuzonda uthatha yena lo odlala indima enkulu ukuthi na uthatha obekade ondla uthatha odla indi yangothi uthatha odla izambane likampondo ka u keti kanti kwenze njani shwele makwakonina kufa ngiya kuzonda kufa ngiya kuzonda bye anele kuni yam All right. Tando kwa ngaleli tuvesti sali piwa wote si yetu lelo msebenzi wetu wesi ulunzelele. I like to thank this opportunity for expressing what we had prepared with our learners. Over to you, Ana Luis. Thank you very much, Scott and Anele. Um, I'm sure that that was a beautiful poem um, that you presented. Thank you for that. Uh, next up, we've got Kaylee and Nomzanu. They're going to present uh, natural sciences uh, with one of our students. Uh, Kaylee? Great. Thank you so much, Anne Louise. Um, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. I am Kaylee Clark. Um, today, I am going to be working with Nam Nomzamo and one of our grade nine students, um, Numpumi. Um, we are going to collaborate two of our subjects, natural science and technology, where we are going to demonstrate to you an interactive uh, circuit simulation, which we use to teach a section of our syllabus. Yes, Kaylee, thank you so much for that. Um, tech and natural science, they intertwine. So today we're using a learning tool called FAT Interactive Simulation. So this learning tool allows students to visualize animated, interactive, and game-like learning. So our, our lovely student, Nompumelelo, will demonstrate for us. Yes, ma'am. Awesome. So to start us off, Nampami, can I ask you to please create a series circuit for us, um, composing of uh, one cell, a light bulb, an amateur, and a switch. Great. Thank you. So while Nampami is busy with that, um, I teach natural science to the grade eight and nine learners, as well as life science to the grade 10s and life orientation from grade seven to grade nine. Um, in the senior phase, natural science composes of the three different science subjects, these being biology, physics and chemistry. Uh, we focus on a variety of different topics, um, exposing the learners to all the different sciences um, that they can eventually specialize in. We are able to dive deep into the understanding and research of the processes that are happening in the world around us. For life science or biology, um, this is where we are able to look at a more specific and specialized science field and um, focusing on the study of life. More specifically, we are focusing on the biochemistry, animal and plants, their cells and tissues, and the different processes that happen in the human environment, uh, sorry, the human body, as well as our environments and ecosystems. 
Our practical activities are demonstrated through recordings and um, demonstra demonstrations, as well as our interactive um, simulations, as we can see and put busy doing now. So overall, we really aim to encourage an inquisitive nature in our learners and a want to learn and understand the world around us. So as we can see, Mumpumi is just busy finishing up our circuit. She's adding an amateur. And our last bit of wire. Fabulous. Great. Thank you, Numpami. So now that we've seen you switched on um, the switch, could you please explain to us um, what is happening with the blue dots that are circulating there in our circuit? Okay, ma'am, as you can see, these blue dots represent electrons flowing through the circuit. And we know this is known as our current flow, ma'am. Awesome. Wow, Numpami, that looks amazing. So is it possible that we could make our light shine brighter? Yes, it is, ma'am. By adding an extra battery, ma'am, we can make the light brighter because the voltage increases, which means the current flow increases. And when the current flow increases, ma'am, then our voltage can also increase and that's going to make the light shine brighter, ma'am. Oh, okay, amazing. So can you please demonstrate for us how we do that? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So while Bumi is busy demonstrating for us, I will quickly explain what I teach. I teach CAT and technology. So CAT stands for Computer Application Technology. So it is the introduction into how to use computers effectively in everyday situations. So today I will focus on technology, mainly because a lot of people don't know what technology as a subject is. So technology is a combination of mini physics, technical drawing and engineering. The purpose of technology, it is to introduce learners to basic needed in civil technology, mechanical technology, electrical technology and engineering graphic design. So learners will gain an idea of the way engineers apply their scientific principles into practicals. So in short, technology will prepare learners to be future technicians, artisans, engineers, quantity surveyors, and also architects. So for me, that looks amazing. As you can see, the light is shining brighter. So can we measure the voltage of the battery in the circuit? Um, yes, we can, ma'am. The voltage in the battery is measured using um, a device known as a voltmeter, ma'am. This actually measures how much voltage is flowing through the circuit, ma'am. And in turn, you can see that when the voltage is being measured, ma'am, we know how much of it is going through the circuit, which also know, makes us know that there's a lot of current going through the circuit, ma'am. Perfect. Fabulous. Amazing. Thank you, Numpumi. So overall, to finish up, can you explain to us what exactly we have demonstrated here today? Yes, ma'am. So as we can see, we have a closed series circuit, ma'am. And we can see we've got the batteries right here, which power the cell. We have our light source, ma'am. And we have our ammeter and our voltage, ma'am. These blue dots here represent our electrons flowing through the circuit, ma'am. And as we can see that as they flow through the circuit, ma'am, these show that this is our current flow, ma'am. And we know that our current flow, ma'am, is the one that powers the system and helps the light shine brighter, ma'am. Fabulous. Great. Thank you so much, Numpami, and thank you for helping us demonstrate um, our collaboration between natural science and technology. Thank you so much, Anne-Louise. Thank you very much. That was very interesting. <laughs> um, thank you for the students as well. Um, next up, we've got uh, Mr. Dion with uh, one of our students as well, just explain, explaining EMS accounting and all the commerce subjects. Thank you, Dion. Okay, good day, everyone. Um, I'm Dion Ice. I'm teaching all the commerce subjects for Praxis. 
Now, um, <coughs> I'm going to give you a typical short example of how we teach commerce at Praxis Online. Now, first of all, <coughs> I just want to speak this uh, screen share so that everybody can see on my screen exactly what um, it is on about. Now, this will, is a typical lesson on how uh, a, a lesson at Praxis will look like, a commerce lesson. Now, first, I want to just talk about the career opportunities. Now, as we know, the economy and the commerce is applicable to literally every single career choice. Everywhere there's a money applicable or a business applicable or any finances, we will use commerce. Now, just a couple of career in, uh, examples that I've indicated on my screen. You will see that we uh, consulting, teaching, advertising. It is a wide variety of different career paths that you can use. Now, on the next screen, you will see there's a couple of extra examples that I've used. And I also added the many more, plus many more. The reason why I do so is because when you look, say, for instance, you want to go and study and become a doctor or a lawyer, and you have your own practice, then you will be using uh, commerce also. For the reason that there's finance applicable, there will be marketing applicable. So we try to make it practical, as practical as possible in our class. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to demonstrate just a short lesson. I um, just want to get the slideshow up and running. Now, I'm going to focus on combining business studies with the accounting part. I have one of my students currently in class, and this is how our slides will more or less look like. So I will list uh, the skills required to be a successful entrepreneur. We will make it applicable in class. We will make it practical. And me and my students normally have huge discussions on what is going on currently in the world. And I always say to them also that currently in the world, economics is of utmost importance for the reason that we've got so much real life examples that we can apply in classroom where I can connect the theory with actual examples, which makes it quite a lot interesting. Then <clears throat> this will be uh, financial skills. Now, I always talk about, I try to combine my subjects as well so that my students get a real background of what exactly is happening. Now, um, when we look at financial skills, we will talk about how it will be applied in business in real life as well as the theory behind it. Now, um, I've got one of my students in class and I just want him to um, explain to me quickly or to the, to the audience quickly. Darren, what do you understand um, with the concept of budgets. What do you think is a budget? Uh, a budget is a pro projected income and expense. Yes, we do budgets once a year or once a, a, term, a, a certain term to calculate our projected income and expenses so that businesses know where to move forward. Now you will apply this, say for instance, if you're a hairdresser or any, any business applicable, we have to use that commerce uh, part. Then, um, sorry, I just need to uh, just... Uh, skip the, the slide. Um, <clears throat> now, when we are talking about financial skills, we are talking also about entrepreneurs. Now, Darren, can you tell me what uh, you understand is an entrepreneur? An entrepreneur is a businessman or a person who starts a business with the aim of making profit. So if we can add on to what Darren just said, it is basically applicable to everybody. Now, <clears throat> I will combine say for instance, a literacy, like a, a accounting part or financial literacy part with my economics or business teaching. This is the example of that I will use in class where I will show them a quick example of a profit and loss statement. Everything set up on the computer so that I can see that and we can sit and analyze it together. So this gives the students a visual explanation as well as a discussion that we can form around that. Thank you so much for your time and um, I hope you will make a Great decision regarding joining us at Praxis. Uh, thank you so much, Dion and um, Darren, for joining us uh, for that interesting presentation on the commerce subjects. Um, we've come to the end of uh, introducing to the subjects and the teachers. Uh, Amanda, if you would like to end off and then just introduce Rio to discuss the Mindsbox program. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you so much, Anne Louise. I must say, um, I'm actually quite blown away. I know we've gone through a bit of practice and these teachers are amazing. They've just gone ahead and this is how the mm -hmm. classes run. This is what we do. And I think it's wonderful for you to be able to see that interaction. Although, it, as we say, it's not in a physical classroom. This classroom is still virtual and it still happens as you would have it in a class. 
that interaction still happens, the discussion on topics and subjects. Um, wonderful students. I appreciate your time and the teachers. You really have done very well. And this is our day-to-day -day lesson. So that's how we run with Praxis. Um, as again, I just want to say thank you to everybody. And then I'm going to hand over to Rio. Rio also heads up our marketing. And he also, we've incorporated MindSpot into Praxis. As we know that maths is generally an issue for some students. So we obviously, we have an intervention and this program is what we utilize. Thank you so much. And thank you to our audience. Over to you, Rio. Thanks, Amanda. Good morning, everybody. Um, yes, regarding the MindSpark program that we make use of at Praxis, it is an artificial intelligence program uh, for specifically mathematics up until grade 10. It has been endorsed by major uh, tertiary institutions as in MIT and Harvard, etc. The purpose of MindSpark and why we chose to adopt MindSpark is to assist students who, who actually may have difficulty with mathematics, but also on the flip side, those students who excel with mathematics. So uh, that subject teacher or that math teacher pertaining to that grade will actually set out tasks on MindSpark for the students. Or, or a student who they feel that needs extra assistance. So being the artificial intelligence program that it is, MindSpark will actually, it will actually evaluate the student and provide reports based on the student's performance on each subject and each task that's been set out. Um, and then therefore, uh, and with that, taking that into consideration, the teacher can then also, due to the small class size that's been mentioned earlier, can also provide extra assistance and support to their student based on the, the, the outcome or the report from MindSpark. Uh, additionally, I did mention that's also for students who do excel in mathematics. So a, the subject teacher can also activate uh, topics on a higher level than what's currently being taught for the purpose and advantage of their student. And, 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 we can, and then the subject teacher can obviously take it from there whereby um, the recommendations can be put in place for their specific student in terms of their future and, and career aspirations, etc. So in a, in a nutshell, that's MindSpark. Um, it, it's, it's widely used. It's a fantastic program. And uh, it, it's also included in our fee. So there's no extra cost to, to the parents as well. And it, it's very, very uh, encouraging that uh, we're using it. And we're looking forward to our math teachers uh, diligently rolling it out. Thank you very much, Anne Louise. And Amanda. Um, is it just me? I can't hear Anne Louise at all. I can't hear Anne Louise. Uh, okay, sorry about that. A little bit of a technical one there. <laughs> um, thank you very much, Rio. Um, if you would like to find out a little bit more, uh, you can visit our website. I've posted up some contact us uh, links for you to view. If there's any questions, you're welcome to post it up in the chat box or the Q&A. Um, in the meantime, I'm gonna ask Amanda or James to end off the meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Anne Louise. Um, I would just like to close off by just thanking everybody and thank you, thanking our audience for attending today. And please, yeah, feel free to contact us. Uh, we can assist you as well. We have the campuses, as James has also um, uh, said earlier on about that we've got in all the different nations, well, nationwide, so that you can access those points. And yeah, that's about it. But thank you very much, everybody, for your time. Thank you to our prospective parents and those that are haven't been able to join and are streaming. The uh, streaming is available on our Facebook page. Thank you very much.